what is going on youtubers you're here from maji and jay today finally we have a beautiful day here in florida it's been raining for about two weeks and i have this thing sitting around this is called the pat moto rover this is a motorized bike with a four stroke motor the bike and the motor came separate that's the motor back here this is a 79 cc three horsepower motor and we have the frame with the tires and everything else inside of this box uh, very similar to when you buy a walmart bike it comes in a box uh, similar to this and uh, everything is inside all the hardware we need uh, the cool part about these is that you pay you know one price and you don't need to uh, you know really get anything else there's a lot of um, uh, room for improvement with these bikes in terms of uh, speed and you know all that good stuff but we're going to be talking about that later on in this video we're going to focus on the unboxing and the assembly of the pat moto rover of 2020. all right so here we're going to start with the engine so let's go ahead and uh, cut this loose so inside of the box here like i said we have a lot of cardboard protecting the engine as you can tell so this is a very nice packaging by this company we have the clutch and the sprocket cover i believe here comes the engine Let's see, inside of the box here we have the chain. Here it is, check that out guys. Uh, so here we have the chain for the clutch and the um, jack shaft. So here we have some tools. These are the uh, bolts uh, to mount this uh, to the bike. So now we got the engine out of the way when it comes to the unboxing and now we're going to do the bigger one. So let's go ahead and start cutting around. Try to keep your knife not too deep in case there's something in here that you could damage. So just clips. I gotta say this company needs a lot of credits for their packaging and check that out inside. I can tell that maybe I opened it upside down, but it doesn't matter. Wow, this is exciting, guys. Super, super exciting. We have, uh, I guess, some parts. Maybe the seat is inside. There we go. Alrighty, guys. Here I have my amazing helper, Mai. A lot of you guys always question, where is Mai? Well, she does help me in the shadow of course and uh, I come strapped here with a few uh, zip ties as you guys can tell one of the first things you want to do once you take this out of the box is install the front wheel that will allow you to use the kickstand and complete the rest of the assembly now make sure that when you insert the tire first of all remove the nuts and washers that come with it and you're going to insert the disc right in between the caliper like so so make sure that you see that the caliper is right in between okay so make sure you're gonna see two brake pads in the middle when you're looking at it here from the front side make sure that your disc goes right in between that way you ensure that this is installed correctly otherwise you may have some braking problems right after that you're going to insert this um, clip right in here like so then you have a washer you will insert that as well inside here and then goes the nut these are 15 millimeters so do it by hand first and now we're going to do the same thing on the other side now you can use a 15 millimeter socket for both sides and tighten the bolts like so although this is not a requirement i will remove the two bolts holding the caliper for the front brake and add some thread locker it is 100 percent recommended it prevents it from getting loose as i mentioned before so this is a size five and I happen to have them in a socket style. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove both of them. Voila. What I do to balance my caliper is that I manually engage the brake by flipping this part up and with a number five Allen socket, 
I tighten the upper bolt and the lower bolt. There's two of them. Not too much pressure is needed as you can strip the bolt. Hey Mimi. What's up baby? What's up baby? You like the bad moto baby? Isn't this a hot bike? Yes, you agree, don't you, huh? Don't you, baby, don't you? Well, guys, uh, inside of this uh, little box that came inside of the big box is where we find the seat. I believe we have the seat post right here. Very cool. Uh, next item we have is the pedals. We've got the manual for the bike. This is for the frame. And then we have the maintenance information and the pictures are in color as well. So this is one of the best manuals and I have to say, this is one of the coolest bikes to assemble that I've seen. Everything is really straightforward. The next thing we're gonna do here is install the um, handlebar. Something I came to find out which is quite cool here from Pat Moto on the 2020 bikes is that they decided to eliminate the chimps and now they have a proper handlebar that fits it so you don't have to worry about finding those chimps. I thought that they were gonna be inside of the box that I just showed you guys before. And no, they were not there because they're not required. Now these screws are actually right here on the floor. Uh, these are size four. And I would recommend using thread locker as well here as they tend to come loose with vibration, at least from my experience with the other bikes that I've had before. So again, add thread locker and you do not need the chimps. Something you need to look out when installing the stem is to leave proper spacing here and here as well. Don't go ahead and type one side all the way to the bottom and then not do it on the other side. It needs to be balanced, otherwise you're not going to get a good grip here with the stem. Just keep that in mind. Something I want to point out to you guys now that I have the handlebar almost all set up and ready to go is that if you do have play here between the suspension and the steering wheel, the way to fix it is by adjusting what they call the gooseneck. And there's gonna be two bolts here on the side. Make sure that you get these two bolts loose. These are size four. And inside here, there's like a little cover. You remove that cover and you're gonna have a size five bolt. Just adjust it. Uh, clockwise and the more you tighten it the less play you're gonna have now be careful you don't overdo it otherwise you're gonna have problems steering the bike also make sure that all these bolts are tight because when they come from factory they're not tight enough as you can tell this handle has a little bit of play just make sure that you tight every bolt you see around make sure that it is nice and snug including here the switch you can see it has some play that's because you have to adjust it on the back side. Before adjusting the gooseneck, which is these two bolts right here, they're size number four for Allen uh, wrench, make sure that you align the handlebar with the front wheel like so, that everything is straight, and then you can go ahead and adjust it by getting it tight. Again, it comes loose from factory, so this is something that you have to pay attention to. Once the handlebar is installed, something that you need to do also is hook up the wire for the front brake on the lever and you do so by removing this metal piece, you press it, you remove this metal piece and you insert it towards the bottom like so and then you run it through here and on this screw there's going to be a slot, you got to make sure that they are aligning with this line like so push it back in and now adjust it as needed and something I also needed to do to get the wire to stretch is that you have to loosen a bolt here from the caliper using a number five allen key or a socket if you have one and then later on you can adjust it by pulling on the wire and adjusting the screw back on so that way when you press on the lever it engages the brake. 
For the seat post, all you gotta do is insert the pipe towards the bottom side of the seat. And then you have two 13 millimeter bolts. What I do is I use uh, this uh, wrench on one side, and on the other side I use my ratchet. And what I did is I inserted it here to get a pre-adjustment until this is leveled out. Now with a size five Allen key, what you're going to do next is adjust these two screws. Make sure that your seat is aligning perfectly well with the gas tank and just get them tight. When adjusting the front brake, don't forget about the back brake. In my case, I had to adjust here the rear line. And what I do is I loosen up this bolt, which is a size number five for Allen. And you move this inwards like so. And then you pull the wire until you get a nice grip here from the lever. So make sure that you test it, move the bike back and forward to make sure that the brake is working properly. Something I noticed on this bike is that the pedal chain comes very tight and to loosen it up is very easy. I just grabbed these two 15 millimeter bolts and got them loose. And there is a tensioner right here. This little nut right here, it's a 10 millimeter size and this screw is a size five Allen um, key or you can use the socket like I have and then that's how you can get it properly aligned now there are two holes right here okay and this helps you align the tire make sure that when you're looking at it straight ahead that the tire is not leaning more towards the left or towards the right make sure that it is properly aligned and keep in mind that once you adjust that chain you will have to loosen up this nut right here I believe this is a uh, size 14 and on the other side you can insert a flat screwdriver right there okay to hold it up and you loosen up the bolt and then you can tighten the chain directly from here once you get proper adjustment for the pedal chain okay right now I have it perfectly tightened okay and so now I'm gonna get everything back on here I'm gonna tighten uh, this bolt right here and get the other one tight as well. I'll go ahead and uh, Tighten this nut which is the 10 millimeter one and I'm all set here for the alignment When installing the pedals, there's going to be a left side and a right side Make sure that you get them both correct. Otherwise, you're going to strip the thread inside of the uh, crank here. So uh, The way you know that is by looking here. You can see this one has an L right there that means this is the left, the other one has an R, meaning that it is the right. Now, my recommendation is to use a little bit of thread locker, but instead of using the red one, use a little bit of blue thread locker, and you will thank me later. On the left hand side, the thread is gonna be in reverse. So when you insert it in here, make sure that you go counterclockwise. And then it uses a 15 millimeter wrench to get it tight. For the right side, we have the same scenario that I explained before. There's an R for right. Make sure that you get them correct. Otherwise, like I said before, you will strip the thread and you have to replace the whole crank here. So again, blue Loctite is recommended, also known as thread locker. This ensures that with vibration over time, it doesn't get loose. And as you know, that can be very painful if it comes off the bike so use that 15 millimeter wrench that I explained before a procedure that you must do before installing the motor is to lube the clutch this was recommended by Pat Moto once I placed my order and it is really simple to do all you need is some vice grips you need a 10 millimeter socket and I call this a c-clip removal tool and that's pretty much it so to start all you do is hold the clutch like so and you remove the 10 millimeter bolt it's going to go um, counterclockwise just like a normal screw now you're going to have a locking washer here and a regular washer make sure that you don't lose these keep them aside now we can simply just pull the clutch out there's going to be a spacer I would say that 
this could be looped but for right now let's just leave it here on the shaft itself let's place the engine to the side now with the c-clip removal tool you're going to remove a clip right here on the very tip of the clutch be careful you don't lose this now the clutch comes apart like so in this case if you haven't used this clutch they recommend that you do brake cleaner all over the pads again I haven't used the clutch so I'm not going to do that step all I'm going to do is just grease it up now you're going to have some shims here and I am using uh, high temp grease this is the red color one so let's go ahead and get it open and there we can see the grease let's go ahead and add a little bit here to the chimps like they recommend okay and again this is just going to prevent extra work later on this is hundred percent recommended let's put on the shims on here and then we're going to lube the shaft as well make sure that you get some good amount on there and then you can wipe the excess later make sure that you don't get grease on the shoes otherwise you're gonna have some slipping issues later also make sure that you add a little bit here on the bore of the clutch okay and we're about to be all set here so now we go uh -huh. ahead and put everything back together by inserting this piece on the shaft let me go get my hands clean real quick let's go ahead and wipe here the excess a little bit so that it doesn't spread around the clutch and now we get the c-clip removal tool and we do the same thing but in reverse let's go ahead and get it open like so take your time there's no need to rush here and then just with your thumb push it in and now make sure that it moves freely so grab your clutch move it around and yes it does move freely so let's grab the spacer now and uh, we can add a little bit of grease to it as well it won't hurt anything and now insert it the same way that it came out now we grab the clutch again we insert it in here like so make sure that the part where the sprocket is goes inside not outside now we grab the screw the 10 millimeter bolt with the locking washer and the regular washer we insert it in here by the way I almost forgot to add that thread locker again this is important these are high-speed moving parts so you want to make sure that it goes in correct and the reason I like to use blue and not the red is in the event that I had to replace the clutch the red is going to be super tight and second blue Loctite is better with the heat so red is going to melt and it's going to lose the purpose when it melts it becomes a uh, liquidy again and so the bolt can get loose so now you grab your vice grips put them on here grab our socket and we get this tight let me try to go hand tight as much as I can there we go at this point we have the bike almost all set up we have everything else installed on here the only thing missing right now is the motor in which we just lube that uh, clutch and you will need the hardware which comes with four 10 millimeter bolts you got four 12 millimeter nuts this is your little clamp for the uh, uh, few holes and then these are for your clutch cover put the motor on the base of the mount like so okay now we grab the four 10 millimeter bolts place them in Let's see hopefully I can get them in without any issues I think these it is better if you install them upside down like so with the 12 millimeter nut right here ok 
Okay, so we got this side all set up. Same process, upside down for the back. And go all the way up yet until you start inserting your locking nut. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way, like this. And before we get them tight, I will install the chain now. Now we install the chain from the clutch to the jack shaft, like so. Start from the upper side. Make sure that it goes in correctly. We insert the master link from the back forward. We insert this part. Make sure that when you insert the clip, it is facing the rounded part the close part it is facing the way that it's going to rotate this way it never comes off just like this now we get the pliers and we snap it in place it might take a little bit of patience just hold your breath there we go now we adjust the motor to tighten the chain, moving it forward like so, and we tighten the bolt, and it should be all set to go. For the back side, if you happen to have in handy a ratchet style uh, wrench, a 10 millimeter, that'll make things a lot easier. Once all the bolts are nice and tight, make sure that you have a little bit of uh, slack on the chain and that it is moving freely by tilting the bike a little bit to the side with the stand on. And so far everything seems to be moving great. And while we are at it, after adjusting the chain from the clutch to the jack shaft, remove this bolt from this side and add some red thread locker. It is 100% recommended. For this, I use an impact drill. It works a lot faster. And this is a 10 millimeter bolt. And that was kind of loose already, to be honest with you. Let's add a little bit. And use the red one, as the red one is a little bit, a little bit stronger than the blue one. And it's better with parts the vibrate constantly. Now using the impact drill, get it tight again. There we go. And now we go to the other side. Okay, so from the other side, do the same thing. Counterclockwise, this is just a regular thread. Get it out. And this thing was quite loose. Wow, very loose. Definitely recommend it. These are high speed moving parts. You want to have this stuff on the threads. I added a little bit more than normal just so that I ensure that it stays there for good. It has a locking nut but that doesn't really do much or not a locking nut it has a locking washer excuse me. Now so now that we know the chain is properly aligned and everything's working well it is time to install the clutch cover and you're gonna have three different sizes of bolts. One is gonna be longer than the other two. That one goes on top. Insert the clamp inside of the hose for your fuel line and insert it inside of the little petcock here. I noticed that it makes it a little bit easier if you remove the filter cover to insert the line. And now use the clamp, press it in with your pliers and release. And now we have the fuel line connected. To connect the throttle line, go ahead and run it through this little bracket here with the Phillip screw. Make sure that it is loose enough. And then this metal piece, this elbow, is going to get pinched right there. So. You pass the line through, you hold it in place, you tighten the bolt, until it doesn't go anymore. 
The final step to get the throttle installed is to loosen up this 10 millimeter nut from this screw, like so, until you see the opening inside of that little hole. Run the wire through, just have patience, like so, and get it to where you can't pull it any further, right there, and then tighten your Phillips screw. Hold it with a 10 millimeter wrench and get it as tight as you can. Now move your throttle and make sure that it moves the carburetor like so. Finally to connect the electrical switch which is this right here, all you have to do is real simple. If you go down here, you're going to see a banana connector. Just match it with the engine and insert the wire once again make sure that you run it through so that it is nice and tight okay the next step is to remove this eight millimeter bolt using your socket an extension looks to be recommended the best way to do this is to insert the screw in the socket and then getting it hand tight through here Can you get your ratchet and get it nice and tight. Uh, by the way, this is your uh, fuel valve right here. You have the on and off. Instead of having it here like before, now they added it onto the carburetor. And back here you have your choke. So this is your choke off and you have your choke on. You can see it right here on the uh, cover up the air filter, okay? Make sure that your kill switch is on the on position. Don't forget, make sure that your fuel valve is on the on position. And finally, make sure that on cold start, your choke is on by putting it on the on position. And now let's give it a nice pull. Let it warm up for about a couple seconds. Give it a little bit of throttle. If you are having problems with the idle on cold start on your first start, keep in mind that there is an idle adjuster right here and it is a little flip plastic screw now it comes covered on top of it there's like a little piece of plastic what I did is that I grabbed a small you can either do that or grab a, a knife I had in handy a small uh, flat screwdriver I pull the little cover that won't allow you to use the Phillip screwdriver just remove that and now if you move it clockwise it'll accelerate the engine a little bit giving you the perfect idle a quick tip about the oil is that yes from factory you do get a little bit of oil inside of the engine but that's only good for the warm-up process of the motor like we just did and I would recommend a hundred percent to replace that oil from day one don't even write it with it because first of all it doesn't come with enough and second it is not a good quality oil so to remove whatever oil is inside this is a 10 millimeter bolt and if you have a ratchet style uh, wrench that'll help quite dramatically and just loosen that bolt like so and then you can take it off with your hands it is going to get a little messy so make sure that you have paper towel in handy and while this is draining before we remove that bolt take out the dipstick and set it aside make sure that you clean it I did add a little bit of oil previously but it was a mixture so I'm just going to go ahead and add fresh oil and use a name brand like Pennzoil, uh, Valvoline, Castrol, those are great name brand oils. Now once everything is drained make sure that you reconnect that 10 millimeter bolt. As per the manual this engine can take up to 0.3 liter of oil so that's equivalent to 300 milliliters so I have this measuring cup 
and I took it to the exact 300 milliliters, which again is equivalent to 0.3 liters. Insert your funnel like so, and now pour the oil from your measuring cup. And this uses 10W30. As I said before, use high quality engine oil. As we seal it again, the dipstick, clean the excess oil. And just to show you, before I went with the dipstick to know if it was full or not, and this is how much oil I took out from the engine. So it was about correct, again 300 milliliters or 0 0.3 liters is what you need for this motor. All right, so here I have the PAT motor all set up and ready to go. I got my phone with the uh, GPS pedometer and let's go ahead and crank it up here real quick. my friends concludes today's unboxing and installation tutorial of the pat motor rover from 2020 and comparing this to the 2019 i would say that it is day and night they have upgraded many many things over the 2019 model basically all the errors including the frame reinforcement we have one here we have another reinforcement there here on the back even with the brake caliper it has a permanent non-movable installation as well it comes with the 415h chain the motor can be bypassed and i'm talking about the governor to make it go a little bit faster and maybe playing here with the gearing can make it faster but those are future videos coming again there's very little right now that i would change on this bike i'm getting a different sprocket for the back a max torque clutch and I will either remove or bypass the governor and that should give me about I will say 40 to 45 miles an hour so stay tuned for that with this being said guys let me know down below if you have any questions thank you so much for watching please subscribe comment and share and I'll see you on my next one